The civil war is on. But I don't mean that civil war I'm talking about. The Republicans are fighting amongst each other. And of course, I am on the Matt Gates faction side because Matt Gates is doing the Lord's work in fighting against D.C. corruption and these policies of kicking the can down the road and making you pay for it. Kevin McCarthy was supposed to work with the Freedom Caucus and MAGA Republicans, as many say. They call them the far right Republicans, but I would say anti-establishment faction. And instead, he cut a backroom deal with Democrats to get a continuing resolution through to fund the government and provide funding to Ukraine and a whole bunch of stuff we, the American people, do not want. Matt Gates is one of the only people, there's a handful, but he's leading the charge in standing up against this. Right now, you've got Kevin McCarthy saying, you know, I got funding for the troops, for veterans, and now you're trying to remove me. Here's his quote. A defiant McCarthy is scheduled the vote for Tuesday saying, if you throw to speaker that kept government open and paid the troops, I think we're in a really bad place. What a despicable and disgusting misrepresentation. And that's why I say you can't trust this guy. But I do think Matt Gates played it right. You go back to when the fight over the Speaker of the House was happening, and a lot of people were asking why it was that Matt Gates finally caved in. He even nominated Trump. I loved it. It was absolutely hilarious. Why now give in? What more could you do? I think Matt Gates is smart. I think he's doing the right thing. And uh, I think this was the strategic move. You can't just obstruct forever. You need a plan. So when it comes to the fight over the speakership, Matt Gates says, look, we want concessions. We don't trust you. It's going to be the same corporate politics garbage. Finally, it comes down to it. And he says, OK. And many of the other people came around and said, we're going to back McCarthy on this one. I think for the most part, where, where, where we are now, it shows it was the right move. Because now, when Kevin McCarthy did exactly what Republicans feared, cutting a backroom deal with Democrats to bypass what actual Republicans were fighting for, you see, Kevin McCarthy is untrustworthy and may as well just be a Democrat. But here's the best part. They may vote today. The question is, are they going to vote for right away at noon? And by the time you're watching this, it's well afternoon. Or is the question, uh, or are they going to vote later tonight? I think it might be later. We'll see. By the time you watch this, the news may already come out. It's an unfortunate circumstance of breaking news when I record my segments. But Democrats are going to have to be the ones to save Kevin McCarthy. If Democrats cross the aisle and vote for the Republican, they will be eviscerated by their bases. I do not see a circumstance in which Democrats are going to be able to vote to support Kevin McCarthy. Just think about it. All of these woke Democrats, progressives, leftists, and even moderate Democrats are going to have to answer to any number of progressives, anti-Trump lunatics, when they say, here's why I supported a Republican for speaker. They don't care about the logic behind it. They don't care for the uniparty. Democrats are not. And, and look, you're going to have to overcome however many votes Republicans uh, so he might he might need like 11 to 12 Democrats to switch sides and vote for a Republican Speaker of the House. Oof. Now, to, to clarify, it would be voting to keep him in. So they could they could say, look, it's disruptive and we already have him as speaker. Let's just get the work done here. And the Republicans have a majority, blah, blah, blah. I, I think a lot of Democrats are going to demand they're going to demand uh, the voters. They're going to demand of their of their politician of the representatives to take action against McCarthy. But we'll see. Marjorie Taylor Greene is on the side of McCarthy. You got a lot of people coming out saying Matt Gates is wrong, and now they're trying to remove Matt Gates. I don't think that'll happen because they want to expel Matt. He's just saying no more Kevin McCarthy. Apparently, it's only the third time it's ever happened. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Republican Civil War. Here's a story from NBC News. House will vote today on Rep. Gates's push to topple McCarthy as speaker. I want to give what I can a, 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 an applause to Matt Gates for doing all of this, despite facing the risks he is facing. A lot of people were saying that uh, uh, we got a super chat the other day. Madison Cawthorn exposed McCarthy and they ousted him. But Matt Gates is saying or has said he will file the motion every single day if he has to. 
There's no way I see Kevin McCarthy surviving this. I mean, no, 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 no. That's, that, that's probably, okay, it's, to be fair, Kevin McCarthy can definitely survive this. I'm just saying, if Matt Gates keeps doing it over and over and they're forced to vote every day, eventually Democrats are going to eviscerate McCarthy. They're going to be making demands. They're going to be getting whatever they want. McCarthy will effectively be a Democrat. Oh, hey, he's from California. I'm sure it'll be fine for him when it comes to re-election in that regard. But here's the story from NBC News. Taking his critics head on, a defiant speaker. Let me uh, let me zoom in here. Here we go. A defiant speaker, Kevin McCarthy, told rank and file Republicans in a private meeting that he would call a vote Tuesday afternoon on Rep. Matt Gates's resolution to oust him from the speaker's office, according to lawmakers leaving the meeting. He is going to stand on his record, and then we're going to vote his retention on his record. Rep. Daryl Issa, a McCarthy ally and fellow California Republican, said as he left the closed door meeting in the basement of the Capitol. I just want to stop and say I absolutely despise Kevin McCarthy, the corporate neo party, the neolibs, neocons. And that's why I think Matt Gates is doing the Lord's work. He's going to stand on his record and we're going to vote for his retention. Under House rules, McCarthy had until Wednesday to take up the resolution that Gates, a conservative Florida Republican, filed Monday night. But McCarthy and his allies are moving to rip off the bandit and quickly take on the so-called motion to vacate that has been a huge distraction in the Capitol. I love how NBC News, basically you call it CIA News, just defends the establishment with all of these unnecessary caveats. Look at this. Or I should say qualifiers and additions. They say, Gates, a conservative Florida Republican and Donald Trump loyalist, for what purpose was that added to the story? These people are despicable. They are poisoning the well. They want you to hate Trump. They want you to hate Gates. Here's the thing. Donald Trump backed McCarthy. That's right. And then Trump said something to the effect of he's not going to speak out against McCarthy because McCarthy says nice things about him. Great. I get politics. I understand where people are, McCarthy told reporters, but he added, I truly believe the institution of the House, at the end of the day, if you throw a speaker out that has 99% of their confidence that kept government open and paid the troops, I think we're in a really bad place. Whose troops? Whose troops? Ukraine's troops? That's right. Kevin McCarthy's ain't talking about your troops. He's talking about Ukraine's troops because he cut a backroom deal to get funding for Ukraine. That's how it works, huh? Keeps government open. Whose government open? Ukraine's government open? I say it all the time, my friends. I I think Ukraine's fantastic. It's an amazing place. It's got a lot of problems, especially now. But I had spent some time there and it's beautiful and there's good food and there's good people and they work hard. And and, And I feel for them. I really do. But for what reason is Kevin McCarthy working on deals to get money to them instead of money to you, the American taxpayer? I should say it's money from you to them. And the funny thing is, you know what he's really saying? Money to the troops. Matt Gates specifically, explicitly stated when he came on Timcast IRL last week that one of the first things we're focusing on is a single subject spending bill for VA benefits to make sure veterans are getting their pay. I believe he mentioned the troops as well. Uh, uh, def- he said, if you want a defense spending bill, get me the defense spending bill. But what they keep trying to do because they are corrupt scumbags, instead of saying, fine, pay the troops and l- like, They could have come up and said, here's 10 pages of the funding we need in the immediate. Get this done. We'll negotiate omnibus later. No, people like McCarthy refuse, refuse. Why? Because the way the machine works is corporate lobbyists come in, cut deals with with the congressional leadership, draft this 5,000 page garbage full of funding for a total, total BS. And then tell members of Congress, you're voting for it. End of story. Because if you don't vote for it, now you're not funding the troops. Matt Gates comes in and says, no, no, you want to fund the troops? You get me a bill that says fund the troops. That's it. We're done. And they said, no, Kevin McCarthy couldn't get it done. So he cut a deal with Democrats to cross the aisle and vote for him. And for that, Matt Gates says, I'm going to remove you. Look, what's the point of a Republican majority in Congress? They keep talking about they're coming after Donald Trump. OK, now I'll rag on Trump for supporting McCarthy all day and night. I don't think Trump is perfect. I think he barely qualifies as what we need, right? He's the best option we have. I'll take it. Trump did a lot of good things. He did a lot of bad things, but I'll take it. I'll take it right now. We got a culture. We got a political political conflict. But what's the point when they all come out and say, Donald Trump cost us the majority. Donald Trump, because of his endorsements, we could have done better. 
lies. Not true. And you know what? Doesn't even matter. Because even though the Republicans did take a slim majority, and I'm mostly, mostly excited for people like Matt Gates, many of these rank and file Republicans are going to march in lockstep with the Uniparty. Even though they got that slim majority, what do they do? Kevin McCarthy negotiates with the Democrats instead. What is the purpose of a Republican majority? What's the purpose if all that's going to happen is Kevin McCarthy is effectively a Democrat? Nothing. So Matt Gates is completely in the right to do this. And I got to say, anybody who is saying Matt is wrong may as well be a Democrat, even Marjorie Taylor Greene. Hey, I like Marjorie Taylor Greene. I think the media lies about her and smears her. And I think she does. She does good things. But I got to say, if you finally get, after years, a slim majority and you are not going after the corruption of the Democrats, and you are instead negotiating with them to cut deals to fund Ukraine, you are a Democrat. And if you're defending McCarthy now, you are the antithesis of what everyone was campaigning for and advocating for in 2022 to get this slim majority. I don't care for most Republican policies as it pertains to, you know, abortion, surrogacy, these moral, many of these moral issues. No, no, I care about freedom and I care about weeding out the corruption in the establishment. But if you're standing behind the corrupt establishment elites, you may as well be a Democrat. Why then would I vote for you? I didn't vote for Trump in 2016. I didn't vote Republicans in 2016 or 18. And I only voted for the Republicans in Congress in 2020 because Donald Trump's second term agenda was good. COVID was bad. I did not want a Democrat to get in based on what we were seeing. But Trump put out this, this second term agenda. And I said, I agree with too much of these things and have made videos in support of them. It would be hypocritical for me to come out and say I would not get behind this, despite the fact I do take issues with what Trump represents. Trump, I say right now, 51 percent. That, that, that's where I'm at with him. And what I mean by that is I wish any president could have a, like my approval rating of a candidate would be higher than that. Trump, in terms of realistic chances to win, the things he stands for and has pushed against, and most importantly, the likelihood to which he fires people. That's mostly it. Right now, you have a Trump who's still behind McCarthy. Bad. I want the corporate neolib neocon unit party to face a reckoning. More politicians like Matt Gates coming in and saying we won't stand for this. And then you get people who are saying Matt Gates is just auditioning for a job and I'm like, dude, literally meaningless to me. If you come to me and say Donald Trump is evil and he's only doing this for himself because he's got an ego and he wants everyone to know his name. My response is, so he got $3 billion returned to Michigan for, with, with an auto plant brought back in during his presidency for evil, malicious, self-centered reasons? Awesome. I wish more of our politicians were so evil that they would desperately and pathetically try to get support from the American people by bringing back jobs and securing our borders and shutting down the Trans-Pacific Partnership and ending foreign wars, bringing our troops back home. No new wars. Wow. I really do think Trump's ego drove him to do those things. Trump wants you to know his name. He wants you to love him. He wants to be recognized. And oh, whoopsie daisy, he accidentally did a whole bunch of really good things in the process. The ideas and the motivation behind good deeds don't matter as much to me. I certainly don't like the idea of evil people doing evil things. But if you come out and you say, Donald Trump is a demon, he's pure evil, I'm like, wow, Look at the manifestation of his evil. He so desperately wants your love and affection for his ego. He did a bunch of good things for the American people. When I look now at what Matt Gates is doing, I'll say this. You want to argue that Matt Gates is doing these things because he wants to be governor or he wants to be senator or he's looking for higher office? I literally don't care. Finally, it looks like we have someone who is doing what we want them to do. And if Matt Gates advances to uh, he, he runs for the Senate. Let's say he run. I don't think he's going to be governor. I don't believe that. I think these are smears against him to make it seem like his intentions are not genuine. But I don't care if they are. Your arguments are meaningless to me. You're like, Matt Gates is only doing this to, to win your support, Tim, so that he can run for governor. I don't live in Florida, and I certainly ain't going to be voting for governor in Florida. I'm not going to be voting for Senate nor in his district. I can only, but oh, but I'm speaking uh, well of him. I hope. There are two scenarios. One, the one I, I, I genuinely prefer is that Matt Gates is a good dude who's fighting the good fight against this corruption. Love it. 
Second best scenario, Matt Gates is a careerist shill who is fighting the good fight, desperately pandering to you. I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, look, Hillary Clinton comes out and says she's got hot sauce in her purse. That's mean, that means meaningless. It's not a policy position. Matt Gates challenge, challenges McCarthy, who's basically giving up the hard-fought slim Republican majority. We are seeing no accountability. We are seeing compromise. We are seeing what is effectively a Democrat going the speed limit. If Matt Gates' intention was to pander the likes of me so I say good things about him, well, it's very smart of him to do things that I like. Now, isn't it? I'm not going to read the dude's mind, and I'm not going to try and understand his deeper motivations. Sure, if there's some Machiavellian plot behind the scenes to subvert and destroy the world is a bad thing. But right now, if you're saying, stop negotiating with Democrats, we won in 2022, and we want to get accountability, but then McCarthy is doing this stuff, he's negotiating with Democrats to bypass the majority, then you're basically saying 2022 was for naught. And I'll clarify for all of you, because I get these people who are like, Tim says we and us, that proves a conservative. No, no, I don't actually agree with most conservative policy. And I'm not talking about Republicans. I'm talking about anti-establishment. That's what I'm talking about. Clearly, McCarthy's a Republican. And if I wanted to back Republicans, I'd get behind party leadership. But I despise the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. I think they're all bad. We're only so lucky to have a small handful of people in the Republican Party who are anti-establishment. So I'll take what I can get. If the Republicans win a majority, how many of us said back in 2022, we all said we could probably get this. And then everyone goes, yeah, but who cares? Like, even if they get it, they're not going to do anything. Oh, man. Luke Rudkowski was saying it over and over again. And boy, was he right. Let me stress this for you. The fact that McCarthy is negotiating with Democrats basically means the 2022 slim majority meaningless. And how many of us saw this coming? The challenge is, it is not, it is not for us to look at this and say, then there's no one to vote for. No, no. It means at the local level, you got to support anti-establishment. At the local level, you got to support people who are challenging the likes of McCarthy. It means that we are talking about a freedom faction versus the machine. And for that, Gates is only one person. McCarthy says he won't give Democrats anything in exchange for support as speaker. Well, he already negotiated a backroom deal with them to fund Ukraine. So why would I believe this guy? I am sick of these Republicans playing this game where they're like, now slow down there, Democrats. That's what they do. That's McConnell. Oh, gee, Democrats, slow down. Then the Democrats go to the Republicans and say, we want more ice cream. We want free candy. And the Republicans are like, well, OK, I guess. Matt Gates is finally somebody who's just like, no. That's all it takes, man, some days, just to look them in the eyes and say, no. I wish we had more of it. All right. Marjorie Taylor Greene. I'm a fan. I like Marjorie. I'm going to read for you her thread, breaking this down to get her perspective, and we'll uh, bring up these arguments. She tweets, I remember last Congress when 11 Republicans voted with the Democrats to kick me off committees. I didn't care about the Democrat votes, but the 11 Republicans votes stung. Now my friend Matt Gates says he's going to make a motion to vacate Speaker McCarthy. And I saw and I saw in the news that other Republicans are now talking about expelling Matt Gates. Here's how I see all of this. As members of Congress, we are each elected by hired by the people of our districts to represent them and responsibly responsibly govern for the American people. The electorate gave Republicans the majority of this Congress, which means we are in charge of responsibly making a budget and control where the American people hard earned tax dollars are spent and how. But we only have 222 Republicans and it takes 218 to pass anything. I can't possibly explain to you how difficult it is to get 218 votes of 218 of us to agree on anything. I often compare it to that of a family argument of not being able to agree on what to eat for dinner. I want this. No, I want that. No, I don't want that. It never ends. Here's the bottom line. Most people generally care about four things. Their kids, their pets, their bank accounts, their jobs, and their weekends. And when stupid politicians are screwing up anything to do with their four things, people get angry and rightfully so. And right now, people are angry about a lot, and I don't blame them. They're still angry at COVID shutdowns and mandates. They're suffering from Bidenomics that created crippling inflation. They're appalled at Democrats' open border policies. The Biden admin ceding our border, et cetera, et cetera. I want to get to the point of her more prescriptive uh, analysis. Killing Russians could lead to World War III. Super politicians are doing all these things. I don't blame people one bit for hating politicians in D.C. It's going to be really hard to do that in normal times. Uh, saying, but now we've got to start the week off with a big family feud and a motion to vacate Kevin McCarthy and a movement to expel Matt Gates. All of this has the Democrats, whose America's electorate f- fired last Congress, 
giddy with opportunity to take full advantage of gleaning prizes for themselves in exchange for votes. All of this now has the House of Representatives on the verge of chaos and will only leave our majority weakened and dangerously fractured. Full stop there, Marjorie. If Kevin McCarthy cut a backroom deal, you have no majority. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Now, I'm not really ending it there. We've got a couple more minutes. I always go about 20. What's the point? Why should I? I'm not in Congress. I'm just a dude who complains on the internet, right? Why should I, the moderate voter in this country, sick of the wokeness and the corruption, get behind going the speed limit for corruption? Not going to happen. That's it. Now, on the verge of our, our, our majority is fractured. You don't have one. You don't have a majority. Kevin McCarthy's cutting backroom deals with Democrats. Your majority is meaningless to me. And I don't see a very strong reason to support or vote for any of you. Matt Gates, sure. Donald Trump, maybe. But what's the point? What's the point? People have mentioned, like, would you vote for Donald Trump if he chose Nikki Haley as his VP? And I was like, man, I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. It's tough. It really is. Because, you know, my position 2012, 2016 was, count me out, ladies and gentlemen, I ain't voting between a giant douche and a turd sandwich. South Park hit the nail on the head with a hammer. And then I get, you know, we had Phil Labonte mention this, whatever slows down the far left, we should support. And I'm like, I disagree. No, no, no. I agree with Phil. I do. But I don't believe supporting this slows them down at all. At all. The argument is vote in favor of of the corporate uniparty or vote slightly in favor of the corporate uniparty. And I'm kind of like, I abstain from providing any of my support and my, my, my word or my voice to these individuals. Marjorie Taylor Greene says, we are here because Congress operates on a calendar set up for producing annual failure. With a September 30th fiscal year end and a calendar that sends Congress home all of August and half of September, it's obvious why there's usually an emergency continuing resolution to avoid a shutdown usually resulting in a Christmas omnibus, which is really like a giant lump of coal in the American people's stockings. No wonder we're $33 trillion in debt. Intentional systemic failure is something I have no respect for and refuse to be part of. This has to change. What I see is a system of failure, et cetera, et cetera. So I agree with Matt Gates that things must change, but I don't agree with the motion to vacate will effectively create the changes needed to solve the intentional systemic failure uh, of the annual never-ending CRs. A MTV of, uh, 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 motion to vacate of our MTV, uh, of our speaker gives the upper hand of the Democrats. I don't care. I don't. I don't care. Because you're telling me the option is give Democrats the power or negotiate with Democrats to give them the power. And I'm just like, huh? What you're proposing is negotiate with Democrats. The other alternative is vote for Democrats. I propose an alternative option. Matt Gates says no. If you negotiate with Democrats, thus negating our majority, we have you removed as speaker. Matt Gates is the only one standing up for what little shred of opportunity we have. And if the rank and file neocon Republicans don't want to get behind that, so be it. Then they can lose. I, re I reject this. I reject outright the weakness. Uh oh. I got to give you guys a poker analogy. I'm, I'm no pro or anything like this, but I'm a fairly aggressive poker player. And I strong, I, I, I love, I love these analogies. I love, I love poker. I love skateboarding. These things give you life lessons in strength, determination, and, and how to win. And that's why I bring it up here. I'm going to give you a skateboarding analogy and a poker analogy, things that I do in skateboarding. There's no cheating. There is none. If you want to land a trick, that holds a risk of bodily harm to yourself. You can't lie. You have to do it. You have to assume those risks. And the risk may be, for what? You slid down a railing. We call them handrails, right? But people know them mostly as railings, right? You jump on the stairs, you slide down on your board. Oh boy, if you slip and fall, you can get hurt. But that risk is there and you know it. And guess what? You land it and for a few seconds it feels good, but the fight continues. And that risk is worth it. Look, man, I like Marjorie, but what she's basically saying is, let's just take it easy and not go for the big trick here. And I'm like, no, go for it. Take the risk. But there's a better analogy. And that, my friends, is poker, of which I know Matt Gates is a player. That's why I understand what it is he's on about. 
somewhat of 70 to 80 percent of poker hands that uh, that win are not the best hands. Right? What is I, I, I phrase this better. 80 percent of winning hands in poker are not the best hands. That means play is substantially more important than the cards you are dealt. There are many circumstances where the dealer gives you the worst possible cards, but you know, you know the limitations of the players you're up against, and thus you put the pressure on and force them to concede, and you win without holding the best cards. This is the game I'd prefer to play. I'm playing poker. I was playing against a guy, we were playing at uh, Hard Rock, because we're here in Miami, and there was this guy who, uh, he's a cool dude, I'm not trying to be mean or anything. He would uh, raise $15 whenever he had a hand that was good. And I didn't know, he, 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 it was a flat raise. It was either nothing or 15. It's like he folds everything or he bets 15. I'm like, interesting. This means that, and, and he's trying to mask the strength of his cards. He doesn't, if you know, if you get aces, you get a really good hand, you bet big. No, no, he doesn't want to do that, right? So I just thought about, okay, this guy only, he's, he's going for hands that he thinks are good or winnable, which means I know likely the cards that he's playing. But I also noticed another player made a big bet. He folded immediately. That's right. So what, I, what did I do? With one of the worst possible hands, I open the pot. It means I make the first bet. He ra- for Like a small amount, like five bucks. He raises to 15. I'm like, here, here we go. He thinks he's got a playable hand. We get one caller, comes to me. I shove $200 in the middle. I say, all in. Fold, fold, free money. My hand was trash. I knew he had me beat. But he was unwilling to take the risk. Now, for all of you who don't play poker or whatever, my point is this. Matt Gates is saying, what's it worth to you? Because to me, it's worth everything. Is it worth the same to you, Kevin McCarthy? Kevin McCarthy can back down and say, it's not worth a fight. We'll just keep moving forward. Matt Gates is saying outright, I will risk my position here with people threatening to expel me to do what I need to do because I'm more willing and you're not. That's what I call testosterone and being a man. McCarthy is a mild-mannered California tepid politician compromising with Democrats who would sell out your tax dollars to soft on crime policies and funding for Ukraine. Most Republicans, almost all of them, do the same thing. Matt Gaetz says, I don't care. Bring it on. He nominated Trump. So I got to say this. All right. I'm not here. I'm not here to just sit back and be like, I guess we'll lose again. No, I'm going to be like all in, baby. Call me out. Let's see if the cards run out in your favor. I got garbage, but I am sick of this game. And I'm willing to put those chips up. Are you? You know what? You can call me tilted. That's what they say when you get emotional at the poker table and make risky bets, play poorly. I don't look at it that way. I see this as an aggressive tactic, and Matt Gates actually has the cards. That's why Kevin McCarthy is facing va- the, the vacancy. The, the removal, because the negotiations happened. The Republicans like Matt Gates, the, the, the freedom you know faction or whatever, won these these concessions and are now using them. Bring it on, baby. I think it's possible by the time you watch this, the vote already happened. But I wanted to make sure how I feel about this. I wanted to express that. So I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.